Hey, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team and welcome to the October episode of Tips and Tricks. Today we'll start off with the community spotlight, which includes two monsters talking at a bar, a pencil giving off uh, design advice, a deranged wizard, and a skeleton just in time for Halloween. How can you go wrong with those four examples? Then we'll move on into the mailbox section where we answer your community questions, including how you can take a character animator scene and make that your webcam uh, for video chat services like Skype and other things. Uh, so we'll show you how to do that. And then finally, we will end with this, how to change yourself into a stop motion claymation style character using modeling clay and Photoshop and character animator. Pretty interesting stuff. So let's get started. Our first example this month uh, is from Ben Phelps from Australia, and this is his series on YouTube, Monster Talk, and it's these two 3D monsters uh, who are at a bar uh, talking back and forth about various uh, topics, whatever they feel like, and uh, it's a really funny show. And uh, Ben worked with the guys at Digital Puppets, who we featured here just about every month, um, who created these guys in 3D using Lightwave 3D and ZBrush, and then translated them into Photoshop files uh, with all the organization and tagging that we need to import into Character Animator. Um, ben talked a little bit to me about his process. He said, I edit audio in Audition, and then I animate with several passes in Character Animator. Finally, I edit in Premiere Pro using Dynamic Link back to Character Animator. An important aspect of the series is that I treat the animation like live action. That is, I edit the characters individually. Then I edit for performance as if these were takes of real people. I think that makes the video feel much more brisk and dynamic than simply cutting between two static talking characters. And I agree, it works really well. It's fun to see them, you know, have all these mannerisms. They laugh, they raise uh, their beers, they drink. They have a lot of little uh, actions that they take, and it, it works really well. It keeps things interesting with the camera changes and all these triggers. Um, and it's been really successful for him, too. He's now got 6,500 subscribers. The most popular video has 29,000 views, and it's a, it's a really big hit. So um, congrats, Ben. This is great, and uh, I look forward to watching future episodes. Kevin McMahon from Design Dojo uh, has created this new guy, Dojo the Pencil. Uh, and we featured Kevin's work a few times uh, on here. And in fact, he helped us create several of the uh, free example characters that you see on the Character Animator Examples uh, puppet page. But um, this little character, Jojo the Pencil, is great because he's got a really nice, simple, expressive face, but it's also got some nice, subtle head turn movements, um, some rotation of the character as he kind of pivots back and forth, and then his little black belt has some dangle physics in it, which is a really nice thing. But um, the thing I love about this is this is a nice branded character. This pencil is something you can imagine on a t-shirt or, uh, you know, in different images and stuff like that. And I've seen him design Dojo start to use him in little posts that they been putting on Facebook and elsewhere. Um, and it's just a really great idea to have this little mascot character narrating a, uh, you know, a pretty informative video. Actually, it's funny. It's about, uh, you know, different things that designers shouldn't do, like, you know, changing the proportions to squash, squash or stretch a, uh, a photograph, things like that. Um, so really, really nice work. Great, simple, but fun character. Here's a cool character sent in to us by a guy named Aaron, aka Digital Muppet. And uh, I love this wizard guy. Uh, he's got a really nice illustrated style. And uh, Aaron's been doing uh, several videos with him uh, where he's just rambling and saying weird random things in a funny voice for a couple of minutes. Um, he's done this with a few other characters in the past as well, um, some different experiments. And he also has tried out some video game streaming with this character um, too. So a lot of different uses. But the thing I love about this character the most uh, is uh, what he's done with the mouth. So as I'm talking, notice how fluid and nice that mouth looks. And it's because it's not just the mouth, the lip sync that he's swapping in and out. It's also the movement of the beard and the mustache and the lines in the face. It really creates a really nice movement and animation style. So let's go into rig mode and see exactly how he did this. So you'll see he's got this mouse group folder and a lot of these visims have, uh, you know, they're a group with two uh, frames, two layers inside them for the two frame animation and uh, cycle layers has been added to the top level group uh, over here. So you take something like the S uh, visim group and, you know, as I visualize these, you can see kind of the transition between uh, how these are looking. 
and you see how all the lines in the mouth are moving and uh, the beard and the mustache and everything. So it really makes this nice fluid uh, mouth shape. And if I double click to get into this, you can see the mouths are actually the whole background of the head. Um, so it's a great way to think about the mouths. Don't just think of it as the contours of, you know, where the lips and the teeth are. Think You can think about it as the whole head or, uh, you know, the lower jaw or something like that and have all of those elements change as a character talks. Because as we talk, you know, as normal human beings, we, right, we have our, you know, our cheeks raise and lower and our chin moves up and down and we get wrinkles in our forehead and things like that. And so uh, you can have total control over how each of these visims look and it makes for a really nice fluid character. So this is great work, Aaron. Uh, I love this character. I love your style. And I look forward to watching future videos and commentary from this guy. And finally, we've got this skeleton character here uh, created by Lynn Mitchell, uh, who we actually featured in the very first one of these that we did, the first live episode we did. Uh, remember, she created this Iron Man character whose armor flew on and off. Very cool. So she is still using Character Animator and uh, creating uh, these really interesting 3D spooky characters for Halloween. Um, this character is very cool because uh, he's got, uh, you know, obviously created in a 3D program and brought into Character Animator. Also has the nice little... Uh, bat balloon that's next to him uh, that, that also talks at the same time. Both of them have the face behavior associated with them. Lots of really cool stuff about this puppet. The thing I love the most though that I wanted to particularly show are these smooth head turns. Notice when I turn the head how smooth that looks. And uh, she's doing a really simple technique, uh, but I wanted to dig into that because this is a question we get a lot from people is how to make those head turns look really nice and smooth. So let's go to rig mode. So in her head group here, she's got a head turner group that has five views, up, down, left, right, and front. And the main turns that you would do, you know, front and left to right, uh, those, she doesn't have the profile views note. So she's only using front and quarter. And that makes things a lot easier because normally, you know, look over here in the tag section. Normally, right, if you're dealing with head turner, you would have to transition between these five different positions. Well, in her case, she's only dealing with these, you know, main three and then the up and down as well. But transitioning between left and right, that's a lot easier to deal with instead of moving between these, these five. So uh, it's a really smart way to do things. And if I dig into the left quarter here, for example, all this is is a cycle layers added to this group. So it's got the cycle layers behavior added to it. So if I double click on here to get in closer, um, you can see one, two, three, it ends there. And then this has the eyebrows, the eyes, the pupils, the mouth, all of that stuff. And then when it's done, it's going to reverse back through this back to frontal. I'm gonna press Command W to go back. So I think this is a really smart idea. Have the front and then only do the right and left quarter views and have those be cycle layers animations to transition in and out of. And it achieves a really nice look. He's also got some nice triggers. When I press S, uh, he shivers and gets cold or scared. Uh, A, he kind of gets angry, puts his fists up. And uh, X, he brings out a little magic hat. So very expressive, fun character. Uh, great stuff, Lynn. Uh, always a pleasure to see what you're working on. All right, moving on to the mailbox section. This is where we answer questions that you guys have sent in on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the forums, that sort of stuff, and answer common questions that we've seen uh, that hopefully will help a lot of people out there. So the first one comes to us from Star Wars HQ, and they're asking about uh, one of the new features that we showed. Uh, uh, recently, we showcased a bunch of new upcoming features that we'll be adding to the next release of Character Animator, and one of those is MIDI support. And so these guys ask, Wow, so many updates. So quick question, with the MIDI support, will I be able to control triggers with a MIDI keyboard and foot pedals? So for instance, if I wanted to trigger my puppet waving, could I do this by pressing on a MIDI foot pedal? And I'm guessing you'll be able to control movement with MIDI sliders too, it looks like. So excited for these new features. You guys are doing awesome work. Well, thank you very much. And yes, MIDI integration is uh, coming in the next release and you hook it up either through the triggers panel or the controls panel. So for example, I've got a keyboard at home that I hooked up by MIDI cables um, to my uh, MacBook. And when I in the controls panel, uh, what you do is you go to layout mode and you select a particular trigger and then you just press that key on your keyboard and it gets bound to that particular trigger and you'll see a little notification 
Now with uh, sliders, uh, what you can do is actually set and uh, edit the min and max of those sliders. So for a position slider, for example, if you wanted the character only to move a little bit, you could do you know negative 25 and 25. If you wanted to move a lot, do 5,000 and negative 5,000, um, whatever you want. And same sort of idea, when that uh, particular thing is selected in layout mode, all you have to do is move the slider on your MIDI device and that will be bound to that control as well. So this leads to a lot of really awesome possibilities and uh, I think it's gonna be really exciting to see what people do with the new MIDI support when it releases. Next question comes to us from David Coriel who says, hey Dave, is it possible to do a Skype call but not with a webcam? Instead, I wanna have my character appear and talk to the people I call. So yeah, you can do this and the way you would do this is you kinda of have to trick your system into thinking that Character Animator is another camera source. And the way I would do this is through creating a virtual camera. So you can use a piece of software like Wirecast, which we've featured several times in the past for its live streaming capabilities, but Wirecast also allows you to create what's called a virtual camera. So you would just set one of those up and then whatever you've composed in Wirecast, which can include a character animator scene using new text and DI plugin, and we've gone over this in other videos so you can look at those, but Basically, setting that up will allow you to run a virtual camera, and then that will be identified as a camera source in other applications. So if you go into your Skype preferences, for example, you would then see uh, that virtual camera show up as an input source, and then that is a camera that you can use uh, for your Skype calls. So yeah, that's how I would personally do it. There's probably a bunch of different ways to do it, um, but I definitely recommend doing it because there's nothing better than joining a video conference meeting and everyone's you know, in their boring offices and then you're a fire-breathing monster. Uh, always works out well. Final question this month comes to us from M Nation, who says, hey, how to add scenes? I mean, assets like chair tables in Adobe Character Animator. So if you want to add things around your character, you would import those as individual PSD or AI files. So for me, if I've got a character and I want to add background elements or foreground elements or that sort of thing, I will make them all their own PSD file and then I will import them into Character Animator and then drag them into my scene. And you can kind of sandwich your puppet between them. So I might put a foreground element in front of them and background elements behind them. And then each of those you can resize them uh, around using the transform behavior. So just uh, change scale and position X and Y and all of that stuff and you can create a scene that way. Uh, Character Animator is only going to activate and record whatever you have selected in the timeline though, so don't select those when you're doing a recording or a live performance. Only select your puppet that's in between all of them, and that will allow you to do the live performance with all these other uh, assets around it. So if you've been watching these episodes for a while, you probably remember the claymation experiments of David Taub, where he made clay stop motion style characters. So that inspired me, and recently I started to make some clay characters as well. It's a really fun process and gets you great results. Is it going to replace traditional claymation style animation? No, but if you want to achieve a similar look and be able to perform with it live, this works really well. So any type of clay should work. I used a Sculpey modeling clay, but my kids used Play-Doh. And you don't have to worry about baking it or anything like that. You're just going to mold some parts and take some photos. So you could potentially reuse the same clay over and over again for multiple characters. At the very least, I think you want a head, torso, eyeballs, nose, and eyebrows. And think about whatever parts you want to move independently, like eyebrows, and keep those as separate parts. If you're not sure, just separate everything into parts because it's easy to composite them back together in Photoshop later. You'll want to shoot each of these parts on a solid color background that's easy to cut out. So I just taped a piece of white paper to a cardboard block. Ideally, you'll want your camera on a tripod or in a set position so everything lines up easier in Photoshop. And you want to have a consistent light source. So shoot everything in the same place with the same lighting. The highlights and shadows are a huge part of the dimensionality and visual appeal of this style, so changing that can lead to an inconsistent look. Head turns look really nice with this technique, so try turning the head or character slightly to the left or right and take several shots to get each head position. How far you go down this route for each piece is up to you. For me, I just shot the head in different positions, but for the other parts, I just shot them once and then I later squashed, stretched, and manipulated them in Photoshop to fit each view. If you need a piece to be floating for easier shooting, try to stick it with a toothpick into a clump of clay. 
And in Photoshop, it's just a matter of bringing in all your images and using something like the Magic Wand tool or the Magic Eraser to get rid of the backgrounds. I had to zoom in a little bit and do some extra manual erasing just to get rid of some jagged edges. But then you put everything together using the normal character animator structure, naming and organizing everything just like any one of the example files. Clay mouths look awesome, but can be pretty time consuming to get all 14 mouth positions made. So for this orange guy I did, I just used the standard mouth set from our examples, and then I did a hard light blending mode plus lowered opacity to make it feel connected to the character. Uh, for this duck character, I made a beak with a few open and closed positions, and then I used the free transform and puppet warp tools in Photoshop to manipulate each shape until I had one for every visine. So do whatever works best for you. One tip that worked well for me was reshaping or recoloring existing parts to make other parts that still have that clay texture and feel. So for example, this guy's pupils are just the eyebrows squashed in Photoshop and with their levels adjusted down to black. And his triggered eyelids are just the nose squashed down. I also added some subtle drop shadows to each piece to help it feel more connected to the overall puppet. I think we'll keep seeing more puppets in this style in the future. Uh, Digital Muppet, who we featured in the community section a little earlier, has also been experimenting with this recently and posted a great little short with a blob character he created using very similar techniques to what I've talked about here. So that's a quick look at claymation style puppets. Uh, this guy, Clay, will be a free downloadable example on our puppets page when the next update comes out. So you can take a closer look at how he was put together and use him as a guide for your own creations. All right, that's it for this month. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, one final note, we will be at Adobe Max, October 18th through 20th in uh, Las Vegas. So if you're gonna be there, please stop by and say hi, or better yet, come to one of our character animator labs that we're doing. I'm doing four of them, I think, uh, where we're teaching the basics of character animator, get a character up and running from scratch. And then my coworker, Dan Ramirez, is also teaching a more advanced class. So if you're there, definitely recommend taking them. I think they are all sold out, uh, filled up right now, but you can wait outside in kind of a standby line. And usually a lot of those people get in if you're there early enough. So uh, definitely check those out. Uh, other than that, if you have any other questions, concerns, comments, bug reports, that sort of thing, the best place to go to get help is the official Adobe Character Animator forums. Uh, that's it for this month. Thanks a lot for watching and have fun.